Hi there. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a process called completing the square. And it's all about moving from standard form, which looks like this, and we really can't do much with it. We want to move to vertex form. Right? So vertex form is very useful because, as we saw, we can solve, we can find the vertex and plot. Right? So vertex form is very nice. Um, standard form is not very interesting. Okay, So this is the one we don't want. This is the one we want. However, most equations come in this form, so we have to figure out a way to convert. Okay? So today's process is called completing the square. And it will be a little bit complicated because there's a few steps in there. Um, but we're, we're going to figure it out by the end. So we're just going to do a couple of examples, and that's how we'll figure out what's happening. Okay. So the idea is that I need to write this as a x minus h squared plus k. Right. So the first thing you'll notice is that this plus k here is outside the bracket, and there's an a factored out. Okay. So to start making it look like that, what we're going to do is we're going to just block off this part right here. Okay. So there's 2x squared plus 8x. And we're going to leave that plus 5 out there. Okay. Because we want that plus k out there. Okay. Now I'm not saying that this is k, but I'm saying we want a number out there. Okay. Then the next part is going to be I want to factor out that 2 because this x doesn't have anything in front of it, right? And there's an a out front. So what I want to do is I want to take that 2 out. So x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay? So notice that since I put this in brackets, now when I factor the 2, I'm not factoring it from the 5 anymore because this is in brackets, right? So the 2 only applies to here and to here. Okay? Now... The next part is the part that gets interesting. And the idea is that I want to turn this into a perfect square somehow. Okay? So see how this is a perfect square trinomial? It's x minus h times x minus h. Right? So that's a perfect square. Right? So the idea is that I want to turn this into a perfect square. So the problem with that is that while I have x squared plus 4x, I have to add something else in there in order for this to be a perfect square trinomial. Okay? So what I want you to think about is what could go here so that this would be a perfect square trinomial? Okay? So... We're going to do some work in class to try to figure this out, okay? Um, but the whole idea is that we're going to take half of that 4, okay, so half of it, and we're going to square it, okay? So we're going to see how that works. Okay, so 4 over 2 squared, so that's 2 squared, which is 4, okay? Now we're going to talk about why that is, okay, so don't get confused by that. But what I also want you to notice is that I can't just add 4 into the equation. That's not allowed. But I could add 4 and then subtract 4, right? That hasn't changed anything. So I've added 4 and subtracted 4, okay? All right. So now I want this to be a perfect square, okay? So notice that x plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 factors to a perfect square trinomial. And it's actually x plus 2 squared. Right? And here is my minus 4 plus 5. Okay? So now we're really close to looking like that vertex form. Okay? But the last thing we have to do is kick this 4 out of this bracket. Okay, so this 2 applies to this, so that's actually 2, and then x plus 2 squared, and then the 2 applies to the minus 4, so minus 8 plus 5. 
Okay, so I've applied to two here and I've applied the two there. So now this simplifies to two x plus two squared minus three. Done. There's vertex form. Okay, so this has a vertex. Uh, x is negative two, y is negative three. All right, okay. So let's review here. The most confusing part was probably where this four came from, okay? So it came from the fact that I took half of this and I squared it, okay? The reason why I take half of it and square it is because remember to expand a perfect square, this would be a squared, this would be b squared, and this would be two a b, sorry, just two a b, right? So our a is x, so that's out. So two b is four, so that means b has to be two, so b squared is four. Okay, so we will talk about that a lot more. Okay, so let's see another example. So here. Okay, remember we're gonna block off the first two and then we're gonna common factor the a value. So negative three this time, and I'll be left with x squared minus eight x plus five. Okay. So now we have to do that completing the square business. Okay. So this is x squared minus 8x. Okay, so now if we just remember that we took this, so negative 8 divided by 2 squared, right? So that's negative 4, or sorry, yeah, negative 4 squared is plus 16. So we went plus 16, but now I can't just add in a plus 16, I have to minus 16 as well. Okay, so now let's continue. I've got my negative 3, and here I've got a perfect square. Okay, so that'll be x minus 4 squared minus 16. Okay, so that all factors to x minus 4 squared. And then I have my plus 5. Okay, so now the next part, remember, I have to kick that 16 out of the bracket. So I'll expand the negative 3 to the x minus 4 squared. Negative 3 times negative 16 is plus 48, and then I have my plus 5. So this is negative 3, x minus 4 squared, plus 53, right? So this means that there's a vertex at the point 4, 53. Okay? All right. So what I would like you to do, okay, I'd like you to give yourself this example again and cover this up and try it again, okay? And then for class, I want you to convert to vertex form this equation. Okay, so convert that to vertex form. All right. Okay. So bring that to class and I'll see you guys then.